Amen. Let God's people say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the people of God say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be here in service and worship today towards our God? Yes, it is. Truly good for us to be here. Our speaker today uh, is no stranger to this congregation. Uh, he is a professional accountant, uh, but moreover, he serves as one of two elders at the Freeport uh, Church of Christ. Uh, this brother has exemplified what it means to be devoted to God in all seasons and through all seasons. In the midst of health challenges, in the midst of the demands of serving on the Caribbean uh, Lectureship Regional Committee, in the midst of uh, church problems, he has remained steadfast in his devotion to God. Uh, he is a devoted father who has a lovely wife who is with him today and two, uh, he has two children. I want you to welcome to the podium um, Brother Ellison Delva, a man for all seasons and um, who no doubt will stir your hearts today. I give him your full and undivided attention. Thank you, Brother Bannerby. Good morning to everybody. It's good to be here. Well, once again, I feel like home, especially having Brother Landy uh, read the scripture. It's just like being back uh, in Freeport. Uh, Brother Hasty uh, said to us that uh, he's going to hold uh, Brother Landy hostage as long as Whitney is in Freeport. So, uh, but anyway, it's good to be here. Uh, work has me up here. I'm here for a meeting uh, tomorrow, but I took advantage of of uh, the opportunity to, to come early uh, to uh, visit uh, with my daughter who is working here in, in Nassau and my wife also uh, took the opportunity to come along uh, with me. But it's always good when I have an opportunity to, to be able to speak uh, to you here at, uh, at Highbury. And I certainly bring you greetings from the uh, church in, in Freeport uh, where, as Brother Bannaby mentioned, uh, Brother Miller, James Miller and myself we serve as elders, yes, uh, for the Benavy, there's lots of there's problems, there's lots of challenges, but it's all a part of doing the work of the Lord. Um, if you would take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 50. I was told by Brother Kevin that you all uh, have started a theme, uh, an overall theme about uh, Christian uh, Behavior, and I didn't kind of want to just kind of just come with a topic that just completely throw you off of course. So I kind of uh, develop a lesson that hopefully will will fit uh, somewhat. Uh, I'm not sure you're too off course, but hope uh, fit in your overall uh, theme of Christian behavior. I want to talk uh, this morning on the power of forgiveness. When we think about uh, Christian behavior, certainly uh, forgiveness. Forgiveness is an area that, that certainly we as Christians, we struggle with. You know, um, even some folks who name the name of, of Christ, they struggle with forgiveness. And I believe that's why we have so many problems. Is because there seems to be an unwillingness on behalf of some folks to forgive. An unwillingness for some folks, Brother Bannerby, to just let it go. To just let it go. And we find in, in Genesis chapter 50, we find Joseph. Joseph certainly uh, exhibiting the power of forgiveness towards his brothers. And I thank Brother Landy for, for reading uh, uh, all those verses. But I'm just going to just read verse 19 and verse number 20. It says, Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. For I am in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. In order to bring about, as it is this day, to save many people alive. 
When you think about the fact that many today are still trapped by their refusal to just let it go. I believe we have too many problems on the job because people refuse to just let it go. We have problems in our relationships, in our marriages, and certainly even in the church, amongst brethren, because some of us just refuse to just let it go. I refuse to forgive, even though God has given each and every one of us his Holy Spirit, which gives us the power to forgive. You see, we are still holding on to some pain from the past. We are still holding on to what someone did to us years ago. We are still holding on to some deep wound. We're still holding on to some words that someone might have spoken to us in anger. But you know, when we look at the spirit of unforgiveness that still plagues even the people of God, it is so ironic about this because this same unforgiveness is coming. It's coming from a group of people. It's coming from a group of people who go to God on a daily basis seeking his forgiveness. All right, this same spirit of unforgiveness is literally coming from people who make mistake after mistake, day in and day out, and will go to God seeking his forgiveness. But the thing is, after receiving the forgiveness of God, these same people, we, I'm talking about myself sometimes, this same, these same people, we will turn around after receiving the forgiveness from God, we will turn around and we will look at those who have, who have messed up. We will look at other people who have messed up and we will declare to them, I cannot forgive you. I could not forgive you. Or we may say to them, I'll forgive, but I will never forget. You see, and we forget the fact that we are the same folks who have gone to a loving God, who have gone to a forgiving God who has forgiven us. You see, even though, even though some of us might have a hard time with this, we need to realize that regardless of how deeply we have been wounded or regardless of how deeply the pain may be, God has given you and I the power to forgive. He has, give, forgive, he has given us the power to forgive. Now, don't get me wrong. When I mention the word forgiveness, when I mention the word forgiveness, I'm not saying that we will, we will get to point or we will get to state in our lives when we totally dismiss the problem. All right? Or we get to the point where we are living in a state of denial. But what I'm saying is, when I mention the word forgiveness, I mean that God can get you and I, God can get you and I to state in our lives where we have been delivered from the pain. We have been delivered from what we went through as a child. We have been delivered from what we are going through even in our marriages. We have been delivered from what is taking place even on our jobs. We have been delivered from what is taking place even sometimes amongst brethren in the church. You see, we have been delivered from the accusation. We have been delivered from the lies. We have been delivered from the rumors and etc. As difficult as this might seem, we must remember that with the God that we serve, not some things, with the God that we serve, not a few things, but with the God that we serve, all things are possible. All things are possible. And so it is possible for you and I to forgive because God has given us the power to forgive. When we look at our text, when we look at, at Genesis chapter 50, when we come across Joseph, when we come across this young man, if anyone, if anyone had a reason to be hurt, if anyone had a reason to be upset, if anyone had a reason to be resentful or bitter, uh, it would have been Joseph, all right? Just looking at, at what he went through. But you see, just looking at chapter 50 and, and finding his response won't tell the whole story. So we got to go up further, go further in, in Genesis chapter 37. And so when we look in, in Genesis chapter 37, when we look at Joseph, you see Joseph went through some things that should have left him really bitter. Joseph went through some things that should have left him scarred. Joseph went through some things that should have left him traumatized. Joseph went through some things that should have left him victimized. Joseph went through some things that should have left him paralyzed. You see, but I thank God that through it all, it did not leave Joseph scarred, traumatized, or victimized. You see, because God worked in his life. God enabled Joseph to maximize his potential in service for him. You see, God lifted him above everything he went through. You see, when we review the story of Joseph, we see where he was one mistreated by his brothers. When we look at his life, we see number two, he was sold into slavery. 
when we look at his life, number three, uh, he was sent to part of his house where he was lied upon. When we look at his life, he was also sent to prison. When we look at his life, he went to prison. He was forgotten in prison when he got there. Man, there's a fellow who went to all, but through it all, Joseph still had the testimony that God was still right there with him every step of the way. What about us? What about us? When we look at our lives, some of us, our testimony can be that for some of us, we have come up under the rough side of the mountain. For some of us, life has been hard. For some of us, life has been hard. But you see, at the same time, we know, if the truth be told, God brought us through. God brought us through no matter how rough things might have been. I know some of the things that we might have gone through might have caused us to have some sleepless nights. Some of the things that we've gone through might have caused us to walk some floors. But guess what? God brought us through those painful situations. He brought us through. And so what is so praiseworthy, what is, should be praiseworthy about that is that, you know, in the midst of all these things, God has been right by our side. God has been right by our side, you see, because it was God behind us pushing us. It was God in front of us pulling us. It was God beside us, you know, because sometimes life has a way of, 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 of knocking us down. And you see, and life has a way of kind of hitting us to the side. But guess what? It was God right beside us, propping us up, propping us up. You see, it was God right there drying our eyes. It was God right there holding our hands. And it was God right there, right there directing. You know, I, I said to someone, you know, a lot of times when you think about insurance and, you know, uh, about the, the ravages of, of, of Matthew. And I've heard folks complaining, you know, uh, and you know, the insurance company, I hope nobody in here worked for the insurance company, but they say, uh, they said the favorite term for uh, insurance companies when it comes to paying out claims is you're underinsured. You're underinsured. They like to use that terminology. But you see, with God, you're fully protected. All right? With God, you're fully protected because with God, he provides what? Full coverage. All right? God provides full coverage. He's in front of us. He's in back. And he's on the side. All right, that's full coverage. All right, you can't go wrong with God. Full coverage. So, my brothers and sisters this morning, I don't want us to miss the point. I don't want us to get it twisted, you see, because as smart as some of us think we are, you know, there have been some things that we couldn't figure out on our own. It was God. All right, as charming as some of us might think we are, again, we couldn't talk our way out of some things. We got out of those things because of the goodness of God. And as influential as some of us are, you know, because a lot of times we... You know, we like to, to brag about who we know. You know what I'm saying? But who we know. But even sometimes our influence can't get us nowhere. No. You know? Even our influence. You know, during the time when I was without power, someone said, call Brother Whitney. All right? You know, you know Brother Whitney, he's with the power company. And Brother Whitney did the best he could, but I still was without power for a month. <laughs> All, right? All, right? All right? Even, uh, even as, you know, we may know some folks, but again, again, we got out of some things because of the goodness of God. All right? Because of the goodness of God. So we need to confess that there have been times in our lives that if it hadn't been for the goodness of God, we don't know how we'd have gotten out. We don't know how we've gotten out. And you see, some of us are where we are today because of the goodness of the Lord. When we look at Joseph, when we look at Joseph in chapter 50, we see him now as a person in charge. You know, his brothers are scared. He is in charge. You know, he, we, can, we can say that Joseph is what, the, the, the COO? He's the big man, all right? He is the one, all right, who is in charge. And so Joseph now is in a position, he is in a position now that he could pay back his brothers, all right? He is in a position to pay back, all right? Joseph is in a, in a position now where he can render evil to those who plotted evil against him, all right? Joseph, Joseph is in a position now where he can what? Get back. At these brothers, right? He's in charge. He is in a position where he can get back at them. But you see, what I love about Joseph, what I love about Joseph, and here again we're talking about, about, about Christian behavior. What I love about him is this. Instead of forsaking his brothers, he forgave his brothers. All right? Instead of burdening his brothers, he blessed his brothers. Instead of hurting his brothers, he helped his brothers. And brethren, that's the message for us, you know, as Christians. As, as far as behavior is concerned, that's a message for us. We've got to get to the point in our lives when we can do the same. When we can do the same. You see, he got to the po this point in his life. You see, because when his attitude towards his brother and his attitude towards them was, I am not going to do to you what you tried to do to me. You see, that is what is so unique about Christianity. That is what should stand out 
amongst the people of God. You see, the children of God have got to be different because we are filled with the Spirit of God. And, we have, and when His Spirit is in us, we're going to be different. We're going to be different from people in the world. You see, I'm talking to some folks. God has given us. You see, God has given us the upper hand. We now have the upper hand on some folks. You know, we, when we look at our lives, you know, there might have been some people in our lives who tried to do some things for us. And God has flipped the script and has given us the upper hand. God has given us the upper hand now where we can put our feet on some people who tried to put their feet on us. But you see, no matter how hard we try, the spirit of God that's living inside of us wouldn't let us do that. Wouldn't let us do that. And so in some cases, we sometimes have some of our friends, we have some of our family members, they're scratching their head, Brother the Benaby. They're scratching their head and they're saying, I can't believe. I can't believe you are helping the very same people who tried to get you fired. I can't believe you're trying to help the very same people who tried to wreck your marriage. I can't believe you're trying to help the very same people who went out of their way to try to cause you to lose your mind. But guess what? All we can say to this is we've got something on the inside that is working on the outside that's making a change in our lives. That's the Spirit of God. Give you and I the power of forgiveness. That's why we're different. Because God is working on the inside. But you see, if we, if we allow the world to tell us, man, we would just kick these people to the curb. We would, as the Bemen say, we would mash them right up. But you see, the Spirit of God has given you and I the power of forgiveness. If we pause, if we were to pause for a moment and ask Joseph, we say, Joseph, how did you get to the point? How did you get to the point where you were able to forgive your brothers when they tried to get rid of you? You know, his answer would have been, you know, everything that has happened to me, it has happened to me for a reason. It has happened to me for a reason. He says, you know, you meant it for evil, but God turned around, God turned around and, 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 and make good out of it. You see, for one, he says, number one, what they did to me and the reason why I'm able to forgive because, you see, it pushed me into the process. Joseph said, push me into the process. When we look at Genesis chapter 37, in Genesis Chapter number 37, let's look at verse 5 through 7. In Genesis 37, verse 5 through 7, it says, Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. He says, There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaves arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down. To my sheaves. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or, sh or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he, then he dreamed still another dream. And he told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time he says, The sun, the moon, and even the stars bowed down unto me. When we look at, at these verses, you know, when you think about Joseph, for the most part, Joseph was... was was groomed early on in his life. Joseph was a son who was loved by his father. But God was working in his life. God was working in Joseph through the manifestation of his dreams. And so as he talked to his brothers, he talked about his sheaves being higher than, th than those of his brothers. And he also saw when the sun, the moon, and the stars bowed down to him. But you realize the mistake that Joseph made? The mistake he made was he shared his dream with dreamless people. All right? The mistake he made, he shared his vision with visionless people. You see, God was revealing to Joseph snapshots all right, of what his future was going to be. But the mistake he made was he shared his dream with dream killers. You see, the Bible says in verse 8, it says what? When he mentioned to them, they hated him even more. I believe there's a practical lesson even in this for some of us. You see, people who can't see themselves with anything... Don't want you to have anything. All right? People don't, who don't see themselves going anywhere in life don't want you to go anywhere also. That's a practical lesson. You see, and so what is it saying to us? We need to be careful of who we share our, our dreams, sorry, and our aspirations with. Young people, young people, I have a message for you. All right? You need to check. You need to check to see if the people who are in your crew have the same goals and aspirations as you. All right? Ask yourself, 
of the people who are in my crew, is it their goal to make it to heaven? Ask yourself, if the people who are in my crew, is it their goal to live for Jesus? You know what I'm saying? Because if it's not, they're going to lead you astray. All right? They're going to lead you astray. You see, the test seems to indicate, or the text seems to indicate that Joseph's brother already hated him, but when he told them his dreams, they hated him even more. But you see, God used Joseph, brothers, to push him into the process. You see, the process that his brothers pushed him into, all right, was designed to move Joseph from where he was to move into where God wanted him to be. All right? You see, when you think about it, Joseph, Joseph could not accomplish the things that in his dreams if he stayed in his father's house, you know. None of the things that, that, that Joseph accomplished could have been accomplished around his envious brothers. He had to get out of that process. He had to get out of that environment. But you see, God had to influence and orchestrate the circumstances of his life to move him from where he was to where God was trying to place him. And I believe sometimes some things have to happen in our lives as well. God is pushing us into a process. I want to suggest that Joseph, for some, for some reason, for the most part, he was comfortable. He was comfortable at his father's house. He had food on the table and everything else. You see, he had no intention of leaving his father's house. But he could have never, never, never blossomed. He could have never flourished in his father's house. He couldn't flourish hanging around his brother. So God had to push him into the process. And so God has to let some things happen for us in order to push us into the process. Because I believe, brethren and visitors, some of us have gotten too comfortable. As Christians, some of us have gotten too comfortable. Some of us have gotten too comfortable on our jobs. We're not saying anything about Jesus. Some of us have gotten too comfortable even in our homes. Some of us have gotten too comfortable in our neighborhoods. And even some of us have gotten too comfortable in the church. We just warm the pews and we're not doing anything. We've gotten too comfortable. And so God sometimes has to give us a nudge to push us into the process. Push us into the process to make us better, to make us greater so that we can do greater service for him. And you see, when God pushes us, when God pushes us, that's not the time to be resisting God. All right? When God is pushing us, that is not the time to be resisting God. That's the time to be praising God because he has more in store for us. In the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible says, Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of man the things that God has for those who love him. All right? For those who love him. So let him push us. Let him push us. And even when God pushes, it may not be comfortable for us. But guess what? It's going to be right for us. Because God knows what he's doing. God knows what we need. Because he's the maker. He's the manufacturer. And so the manufacturer certainly knows what we need. And so we may find ourselves in uncharted water. But okay, we need to learn to trust God. What did Job say? What did Job say despite all that he was going through? Job chapter 13, verse 15, he says, though he slay me, he said, what? Still will I trust him. He says, still will I trust him. So it may not feel good to you right now. But don't get me wrong. It's just right for you. God knows just what you need. Don't we sing a song? He knows just what I need. Right? All right? He knows just what I need. And says, my need, he what? He's, he's going to supply. All right? He knows what we need. And he certainly has a supply. All right? He certainly has the capability. He certainly has the resources to supply all of our needs. And so we need to get excited when God pushes, puts his hands on us. We need to get excited when God pushes us because he has some good things in store for us. And we need to praise God when he puts his hands on us. Because every time God puts his hands on us, we're going to be blessed. We are going to be blessed. Do you realize for some children... Their greatest fear is to have their father put his hand on them. Because they know if daddy put the hand on me, you know I'm in trouble. All right? But you see, but for children of God, for those of us who are Christians, for those of us who are children of God, our biggest fear should be God taking his hand off us. All right? Because if God takes his hand off us, the devil is going to eat us for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You see, sometimes the push of God may knock us to our knees, okay? But guess what? When we knock to our knees, we're in the best position to pray. We are in a position to pray, and we can call on God. It has been said, the lower you get, the higher God can lift you up. 
the lower you get in life, the higher our God can lift us up. But also, when we look at this text, we can say, Joseph, how in the world you can get to the point where you can forgive your brothers? And Joseph says, I can get to the point where I can forgive my brothers. He says, because looking over my life, he says, I have discovered that everything they did to me or was trying to do uh, to me, he said, not only it was pushing me in the process, but he said it was preparing me, sorry, for my promotion. It was preparing me for my promotion. He says, every pit stop that I made. He says, God used that pit stop, he says, as a preparation for my ultimate promotion that you discovered or we read about in chapter 50. He says, in every step I made, he said, God helped me to meet somebody to help me to get to the next level. Help me to get to the next level. He says, in every step I made, he says, on my journey to the palace, he says, God helped me to hook up with somebody to take me to the next level. And I'll illustrate. Joseph said, I wasn't born in the palace. He says, I only got to the palace after I went to prison. He says, I only went to the prison after I left the part of his house. He says, I got to the part of his house, he says, by the people who purchased me. He says, the people purchased me after being put in the pit but that my brothers pushed me in. In other words, in other words, what Joseph was saying, he says, if I hadn't been pushed into the pit, I would have never met the people who purchased me. If I had never met the people who purchased me, I would have never met the Potiphar. And he says, if I had never met the Potiphar, I would have never gone to prison. And if I had never gone to prison, I would have never met the butler and the baker. And I've never met the butler and the baker, I would have never met the pharaoh. And if I had never met the pharaoh, I would never made it to the palace. All right, so every step, all right, was preparing me for my promotion. You see, so thank God. He says, thank God for the people that you have met along the way. All right? Because you see, God has a plan. God has a plan. And, and the thing about it is, we may not see his plan, but God is working. Our God is always working in our lives. And so when we look back over our lives, whenever we felt like God has forsaken us, be assured that God always has our backs. In the scripture says, we said in the scripture, he will never what? Leave us. And he will never forsake us. And so we should never be bitter when we go through certain things in our lives. You know, young man, or I guess you can say older man, for some of us, you know, we don't need to be bitter. And for some of us who are older men now, we don't have to be bitter uh, when the girlfriend uh, leaves us. You see, but thank God that the girlfriend leaves us because having the girlfriend leave us, God now have us uh, met the the. the, the they put us in the position to have the, the queen that we have now for our wives. All right? All right? And you young girls, don't be, don't be sad when the boyfriend dump you. Because if the boyfriend didn't dump you, you wouldn't have the respectful husband that God has blessed you with now. That's how God works. All right? That's how God works in our lives. And don't be bitter when you're laid off. Because if you hadn't been laid off, you won't be the business owner you are today. But that's how God works. I'm saying sometimes we have to take a couple steps back to go five steps forward. But that's how God works in our lives. And sometimes we see some things happening and, and we don't know, but God's working. God's working. Right? You may have dark clouds in front of you, but guess what? There's a silver lining right around the bend. God is working it out for your good. He is working it out for your good. But then we get to chapter 50 and we see Joseph, he meets his brothers, and guess what? They're scared, aren't they? They are scared out of their wits. They are nervous. But guess what? Joseph's attitude is, I'm not mad. I am not mad, he says. I was too comfortable where I was, where I was, sorry. But God used you to push me into the process. All right? If you had not pushed me, he says, I would still be waiting in line for one of you to die so that I could get my inheritance. All right? But you see, but God is faithful. God is faithful. And Joseph says, now I'm at peace. So you might think that I'm going to get revenge, and you know, but God has given me the power of forgiveness. He has given me the power of forgiveness forgiveness. Give me the power of forgiveness. Joseph says, when I look at my son, he says Manasseh, and the word Manasseh means to forgive. He says, when I look at Manasseh, he says, he reminds me, he says, that I've gotten over it. He reminds me that I've gotten over it. He reminds me that I've forgotten the past. And, and for some of us, we need to forget the past. Too many of us are still living in the past. We can't appreciate what God has in store for us, but because we are still living in the past. We need to get to the point where we just let it go. Let's move on and allow God to just continue to work in our lives. Let's get over the hurt. Let's get over those ill feelings. Let's get over those lies because, you see, God is in charge. 
God is sovereign. Someone has said, the greatest reason or sign that you are at a place of peace is the fact when you're able to, to, to bless people who try to hurt you. And you see, that's what, that's what Joseph did. That's what Joseph did to his, his brothers. Joseph said to them, his attitude was basically, he said, you tried to hurt me. He says, but what you meant for evil, God worked it out for my good. Joseph said, you tried to kill me, he says, but God came behind and he covered me. He says, you pushed me into a pit. He says, but God used the pit as a platform for my promotion. He said, you tried to hinder me, he says, but God came behind and God raised me up. You see, the barometer or evidence of Joseph's maturity is measured by the fact that he is in a place, all right, where even though he could render evil, he does something different. And you know, even for us, brothers and sisters and visitors, you see, you know that you are over the hurt when you're able to look the people who hurt you face to face and bless them even though they tried to do you wrong. All right? You are not over the hurt if you're still trying to avoid your brothers and sisters in Christ or your, or your co-workers. You're not over the hurt. You're not over the hurt if every time you see them coming, you go to the other way. All right? You're not over the hurt. We need to learn to let it go. We need to learn to forgive. You see, because God has given us the power to forgive. But if you keep going in the other direction, you're not over the hurt. You need to pray and trust God and allow God to give you, to give you uh, the power to overcome. Because he has given each and every one of us the power to forgive. What does the scripture says in Ephesians? Now unto him who is able to do immensely more than, than we ask or imagine or think according to the power that works in us. And so what I'm saying to you, brethren, let's unleash the power. All right? We got the power tied up. We got the power bottled up. And you know... In, 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 I guess, in electric terms, electricity terms, you know, sometimes when, when power turned on, sometimes the power don't fully restore. It's what we call partial power, all right? And brethren, some of us, when it comes to forgiveness, we operate on partial power, all right? We need, to, we need to unleash the full power. We need to learn to let it go. We need to learn to let it go. We need to get over the hurt. We need to get over the pain. You see, you are over the hurt when you can go into your pocket and you can help people who try to steal from you. All right? All right? You are over the hurt when you are in a position to hurt those who tried to hurt you, but instead of hurting them, you flip the script and you help them. All right? Remember Jesus. Let's remember Jesus. Let's look at Jesus. What a situation Jesus found himself in. Remember him? Hanging on the cross in pain and in agony, looking down at the folks, the very same folks who he came to die for. Look at Jesus. Spare holes in his side. Blood streaming down his face, crown of thorns on his head, looking down and what he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus, how can you forgive the ones who, who how can you forgive those ones that lied on you? Jesus, how could you forgive the ones who spit in your face? Jesus, how could you forgive the ones who hang you on the cross? Jesus says what they were doing was pushing me into the process. You see, for you see, Jesus says, I came to die. And if they didn't reject me, uh, I wouldn't have a reason to die. He says, I thank God. Jesus says, for my persecutors, because they helped push me into my process. And he says, because of that, he says, I can forgive them because they helped me to receive my promotion. You realize? What did God say about his son in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10? He says, because of, because of his obedience, he says, what? His name is going to be what? exalted about what? Every name. All right? Every name. So Jesus was promoted. And so Jesus says, I can forgive, he says, because I am at peace. He says, I can go to the cross. I can bleed. I can die because I have peace. He says, I have so much peace, I can leave it with my disciples. What do he say in John chapter 14, verse 27? My peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. We all need to get to the point where we can just let it go. Yes. You might have trouble on the job, but I'm saying to you this morning, let it go. Yes, you might have disagreement at home with your spouse, but I'm saying to you, just let it go. Yes, some of you even this morning might have difficulties with your brothers and sisters in Christ, but God is saying to us, just let it go. All right? I know it plagues you, but let it go. I know it caused some of you some sleepless nights, but let it go. I know for some of us, we've allowed situations to even give us headaches. But God is saying, I've given you the power to forgive. Just let it go. I know for some of us, our problems at work has caused some of us to even miss some days at work. 
We didn't want to go to work, face our co-workers, face our boss. But God is saying, I've given you the power to forgive. Just let it go. You see, when we let go, God will raise us up. When we let go, we'll even feel better. When we let go, we'll have less sleepless nights. When we let go, we don't have to walk no floors no more. You see, the Bible is saying, let go and let God. I'm saying to you, let go and let God take over. Let go and let God, because you see, God can handle the pain. Let go and let God, because God can handle the tears. Let go and let God, because God is big enough. Let go and let God, because God is bad enough. It's not your fight. It's not your struggle. It's not your stress. Give it over to God. I'm reminded by a song that we sometimes sing even in the church. Be not dismay, whate'er be tied, God will take care of you. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? If we believe that, we will have the power to forgive. We let it go. Let go and let God. God will take care of you. All right? And with God on your side, and the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? All right? Who can be against us? So I'm saying, let's let it go. God has given us the power to forgive. It's not easy, but guess what? We have his power. We have his power. He has given us that power. If you're here this morning, you've never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. I implore you this morning, come to him. Come to him. He will make a difference in your life. You see, God makes change possible. He makes change possible. The reason why some of us can't change is because we, we aren't availing ourselves of the power that comes from God. You know, some folks say, you know, their attitude is, I am who I am or I am, I am this way. That's it. Accept it. But you see, with God, he can change. All right? God can make a difference in your life. For some folks, the attitude is what you see is what you get. You know? You know? I born like this. But guess what? When you come to know God, he'll make a difference. He'll make a difference. And so if you've never, exactly, you're born again. All right? All right? Not from below, but from above. All right? Uh, come to know God. Come this morning, believing that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Come being willing to repent of your sins, being willing to confess the wonderful name of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, being prepared to be buried in him in baptism, rising out of that watery grave, a new creature in Christ Jesus. If you're here this morning as a child of God, and maybe you're struggling with forgiveness, because I'm telling you, that's a struggle for a lot of Christians. Uh, forgiveness. When folks wrong us, we, we struggle with that. Uh, we have difficulties with that. And like I said, by ourselves, we can't deal with it. But guess what? With the power that comes from God, he gives us the power. Uh, uh, he gives you and I the power to learn to forgive. All right? And we may need the prayers and encouragement of our brethren to help us in this process. But certainly the power of God, uh, if it works, if it's working in your life, certainly the power of God is sufficient to enable you to forgive. And see, because for some of us, there may be some folks we need to forgive. There may be some folks in our lives that we need to extend forgiveness to, all right? But God has given you the power. If you need us to pray with you, pray on your behalf, whatever your need may be, won't you come down together, be standing and sing our song of invitation. 936.